All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. We have a brisk 49 degree morning here in beautiful New York City in all its glory. And we have a special one for you in store today. We're on our way to Long Island Aquarium to go see Joe. And we've been here before. It's an amazing aquarium, but I heard he did a big reboot a few years ago and we wanna go see what it's all about. All right, Joe, we, we made it. Yes, thanks, great to have you guys here. Yeah, so uh, this year we're celebrating our 25th anniversary. So um, when this tank was first built, it was uh, the largest reef tank in this hemisphere and about second largest in the world. And it held that title for about seven years. So it was a quantum leap from a, a 1400 gallon tank that I had when I was at New York Aquarium wow. in Coney Island, which at the time was the largest tank and now 1400, you know, they're commonplace in people's homes now. So yeah. <laughs> amazing how far the industry has come. So tell us a little bit about the tank. It's, it's how yeah. long and how, and how deep? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're 30 feet long, 14 feet front to back, about seven feet deep, a little over 20,000 gallons. Rock work and lighting was designed so that when you do look in the tank, you don't, you don't see corners. Back wall kind of fades away, adds, a, adds a, that atmosphere of depth. Uh, Carlson surge device is dumping at the moment right behind me here. So that'll dump 300 gallons in about uh, 40 seconds, which creates a lot of energy. Uh, but now with the current use of the bigger pumps, like I've got the Abyss AFC 1200 cranking right now. Such a big pump. You just see this, the Carlson come in and then the surge goes and then it just goes back again. Now does it filter out on this side? So the surface skimmer is on that side. Okay. And then there's an intake to some of the mechanical filtration here and, and in the other corner as well. So yeah, some of the design was to leave four feet of tank space on either end to hide some pumps and filters. Uh, when we do go to the other side, you will see the Abyss AFC 1200. It's a big pump. Yeah, so visually this tank is, is stunning. And uh, well, actually, you know what? Let me ask you this question. This sure. panel is what, 10 feet? Uh, yeah, we're uh, 10 feet by six feet. So yeah. the, the panel is 10 feet, but our, our view is like this. Right. And that's obviously by design. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about what you did there with the rock structure? So yeah, so it's a lot of the rock structure, uh, and it's really important to remember that when the tank is empty and you do your rock, it's gonna look very different when it's full. The optics change dramatically. Everything is gonna jump forward about 30%, uh -huh. and it's also gonna go out. Uh, so some of the design was just based on just looking at photos of coral reefs and, and structure and then um, so there's 30,000 pounds of quarried limestone <laughs> Is rock. that all? Yeah. <laughs> uh, of limestone in this tank from Wisconsin. So there's a lot of openness in, I mean, the corals have filled in a lot of space and there's a lot of pruning and cleaving right now. But within the rock structure itself, there's a lot of openness for, for that water flow and for the, for the fish. So the design there was again to just have a full reef, but not, it doesn't go to the back wall. Mm -hmm. Hiding corners yeah. is really important. And, and functionality too, because you have to work in there. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this. This is, I'm coming up on my 39th year of, of, of being involved with reef keeping. Um, so yeah, in some of these areas, even in this tank, when I did the reboot four years ago, um, I, I made subtle changes. I, rock work, I did pretty good. 20, 26 years ago, but I was able to expand some areas and close up some areas and then even just removed about three pallets of rock um, just because I knew I, the corals were going to grow yeah. and fill that space. Whereas in the past, especially back in the day, lighting a seven foot deep tank was kind of like, well, how am I, I don't know what's going to happen. So sure. uh, realizing I don't need to have as much rock work and let the corals fill in that height. I mean, look at the texture difference you have here in the front with the, the bubble tip anemones. Yeah, yeah. Well, this whole ridge is, uh, <laughs> this is all going to get uh, removed. They've, they've overwhelmed, um, which, you know, of course I knew would happen, but when I was rebooting the tank, I, you know, we are a public aquarium, so I just needed something for effect. Sure. Uh, but now they, they've grown quite a bit, so this whole front ledge will get uh, redone with new rock and things. and. Um, yeah, they're popping up in in the main in the main reef structure at the moment too so 
there'll be some removals of those as well. But this area so. here is pretty well done. You're gonna let that fill in. This one you're actively working on. Yes. I think that centerpiece is almost perfect to me. Oh, the thank color you. contrast and yeah. the way it rakes up towards the back and then the gorgonians on the top there yeah. is amazing. I think that's an important part too with some of the, and I don't know why Gorgonia never really caught on, especially the photosynthetic ones for water motion. Yeah, for sure. So uh, mixing in something that shows some movement instead of just a bunch of sticks and stonies, uh, I think is really important too. Um, but yeah, this- You see it a lot in public aquariums. Yeah. But I think that's exactly that. It's, they're looking for the effect. Yeah, because otherwise, People, if they're just looking at like that section, they they, they don't know there's any water movement there, yeah. or what's flowing. And so I, I, I am also minimizing my big fish this time around. So what you see is it, like I won't be adding any other fish that get big. Mm. The general public loves the unicorn tanks, so that's why they're in there. Uh, but yeah, 35 years uh, behind it is the Stuber Acropor um, that originated in Berlin with the Dietrich Stuber. Unreal. And that dates back to 1982. I was telling you earlier when we showed up that I appreciate that there's so much tenure in in New York here. But everybody that I've talked to has been doing this for 20 years already. Oh, minimum. Yeah, yeah. We, we were known as the Northeast Reef Mafia. It was it was a hot spot back in the day in the early 90s. So yeah, it was an interesting time where you know SPS there there really wasn't much happening at all. So. To be part of watching that and uh, happen, and it's a time that can't happen again. Well, can we go look at the other side? Cause Absolutely. This, this view is nice, but yeah, this is. I'm um, liking that one too. Yeah. The, well, we have. Uh, you know, your tank's a decent size when you can have an east and west mm -hmm. side. So, <laughs> so we cool. can migrate over to the east side. Let's go take a look. <laughs> I think I like this side better. Well, I, I vacillate also depending on where I'm at with the pruning and mm -hmm. I, I start working on one side, I work to the other, and then by the time I get over there, I gotta come back over here. I think this side has a lot more diversity and I don't think it's as big of chunks as you have on that other side. Yeah, I just did massive clear cutting, yeah. basically. Um, all that had gotten so tall, you, uh, you couldn't see past the rest wow. of the reef. So all of that got chopped and lowered down. You could, you could almost start putting it back into the calcium reactor, right? I, I, I've done that <laughs> ma many years ago. So an uh, interesting point. Um, so this tank is is solely Kalkwasser. Oh, it is. That's yeah. right. I did yep. know that. So I, I, I think I turned off my reactors in 2014. Um, aside from, you know, of course, uh, other ESV supplements and magnesium, strontium and stuff. But this, when people ask about Kalkwasser and are shy about it, you know, you have to be careful dosing anything. But if, if people want like, so, you know, a showing of what Kalkwasser can do, everything you guys are looking at today, calcium alkalinity demands and pH are all being met by Kalkwasser. And how are you able to keep enough of it moving in there? Yeah. To not affect the salinity. Yeah, so I've got a, a 55 gallon drum, uh, I put in two big deli cups of calc uh, powder that's constantly stirred with a Neheim. And then that's dosed through a doser. Uh, at end of day, that vat gets topped off again, with not with more calc. So I'm doing about 75 gallons in 24 hours. I would have expected more. That keeps me kind of where I, where, I, where I need to be. Um, and that solution is constantly stirred. So it's a milky white. Mm -hmm. And then that's getting dosed into a very high flow area in the back. It's getting dosed into an area where there's the two protein skimmers dump. So there's 300 gallons a minute going through that chamber. So whatever hits there will then just get dissolved and then uh, put into the tank. Wow. Do you feel like as with as much water volume as you have, do you think it has as much impact on the pH as we see in a smaller aquarium? Oh, big time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like if, if, the, if the pump breaks or I forget the top wall, like, yeah, pH will definitely, definitely drop. It's crucial. The amount that's going in goes in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that just, yeah. The, uh, so, I'm, you know, I'm dosing some potassium iodide, uh, some of the potassium chlorides is getting dosed, uh, magnesium, uh, is, is being dosed as well. 
some strontium once a month. Um, transition elements, the TE by ESV, I think is has been really important for this system. Yeah. But yeah, I like to keep things simple, like a, a Berlin system, basically. I love it. Um, without a lot of bells and whistles. Do you find that there's a certain part range that does really well for the aquarium? Depending on what's, some of the higher spots might be up at around 700. And Which is a lot. Lower spots guy. are, you know, I'm still hitting, you know, well over 200 at the bottom in a so lot you, of spots. You so you get 200 on here on this Monty? I'd probably get, yeah, probably, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you do so, have a lot of light on this aquarium. Yeah, there's about 26,000 watts total. Okay. Um, so it, it is it is cranking. And you find a watt is still a watt with a LED? Yeah, they talk about like a 600 water replacing a thousand water. Mm -hmm. um, but it's depending on the spread and you know, maybe over a smaller area, you, you'll get the same intensity, but maybe not over the wider area of, of the thousand. So, so all they're really doing is taking an efficient light source and they're channeling it with an optic. The optic is where you gain or you lose the intensity. Right. Yeah, over, over what area. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, the, like I said, the spread that they've got now and the, the lenses that are available now are, are huge. How many gallons per hour does this thing move? I can move about 150,000 gallons an hour with that. Right now I'm about 72% on flow. Um, so right now probably about 100,000 gallons an hour is coming through that. Uh, and I believe that has been uh, super critical to the success of the tank, especially over the, the, the time frame. Well, cool. Can we go see the gadgets in the back? Yeah, let's or go your, look at your the, mess. Let's go see the mess. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the clean view of my brain. And then upstairs is kind of the, the wiring of, Understood. Of, of my brain. So these are our protein skimmers that I built uh 26 years ago <laughs> so these are just polyethylene containers and a variety of different polyethylene containers and hot air welded them back wow. in the day uh saved a huge fortune back right. then because sure. they're all over the aquarium and it's still running it's still running and i did the math the other day celebrating our 25th year four billion 600 million gallons have gone through this protein skimmer since we opened. <laughs> wow. Uh, an old ETS skimmer. You know, again, this is going history here. Um, so I'm doing about 105 gallons a minute through here. Um, I just fed so it's knocked down a bit. Usually that foam is coming out the top. It's calibrated according to uh, Aquarist heights. So Sanjay's down here. Oh my goodness. So Sanjay's tiny. And then you have Rich Ross is here. And then Matt Wandell is uh, <laughs> six foot nine. So, and then um, Sanjay just has grandkids now. So I, I've added them to the, to the list there. Wow. Yeah, feel free to take a, take a walk out. You do lose the scale of the corals from the front. They do get kind of laterally compressed also. From up here, you can kind of see the... It gives you a whole different appreciation for how far that pump sends water. Yes. When you stand right here and you see that this right. set of Acropora are shaped the way that they are as a result of that flow. Correct. And when I was standing in front of that pane right there with you talking, mm -hmm. I had no clue how big that leather was on the floor. Yeah, yeah, there's That's two. bigger than me. Yeah, there's two of them. I had wow. cut them in half. They were maybe only about 18 inches across when I planted them. So yeah, this is this is the beast from the top. Well, maybe maybe I can thank you for having us. Oh, I think my this pleasure. was a, a hell of a treat. Maybe Good. on our way out, you can show us the seahorse tank yeah, and then yeah. those anemones. Yeah, yeah. We heard you were at, with Randy at Pratt, so yep. we gotta go visit those. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Wow, that was really cool. What Joe does in there is incredible. He's got a really good eye for escaping that tank. And I think that that makes every bit of difference in the world. It was also cool to see all the stuff behind the scenes, all those old school thousand watt halides, all the 25 year old equipment. I mean, let's be real. We keep aquariums for two, three, four years, sometimes 10 years if you're really good at it and you take care of your stuff. But 25 years, that's a big accomplishment. So kudos to those guys. Just like always, like and subscribe. 
make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you know when we post our new videos and check back in and see us. And if you get a chance, stop and see the Long Island Aquarium.